The Zone Coverage Podcast Network. The Andy Luke and Reef Football Machine. Autobots transform. I like this kind of party. Great cash, homie. Starts now. Welcome back to Thunderdome for another Zone Coverage Football Machine on the Zone Coverage Podcast Network. My dumb and I'm not, you're not so humble as Andy Carlson at Andy Carlson Show on the Twitter Machine. And I have equity, more equity than even the millennial Vikings beat writers having no idea what the hell those touchdown dances were. Like Cronin was a, uh, huh? And, well, S- Sam was like, huh, too, except S- Sam's a 50-year-old man. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> In a 33-year-old body. The only one Sam would know is like the Macarena. Oh, I know that one. No, he would know that. The chicken dance, because that's the only dance that he does at, at, uh, at, at wedding receptions. That's a lot. The, the, sign, the, the one slow dance with the missus. That's always. After she signs the My endless love. I'll play the wedding some more. Yeah. What are we here for? Oh, yeah. Uh, joining me, as always, is uh, Luke Inman. Luke underscore spin man. Hey, how's it going? Feels good. Feels good. Does it? Just watch that Kirk Cousins, uh, you know, the intro warm up speech. Yeah. But to ready run through a goddamn jo- wall. For you Joel guys. Embiid did that and then struggled serious? in the first game he played in. <laughs> yeah, Joel can't do one. <laughs> it's Kirk Cousins said. When I win, you win. And when you win, you win. Wait. What? Five time shares. Clark Gable? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I, I, I like that. I, I, I bet know. you Kirk really wanted to do the pregame speeches, but then he was like, I, I, I need I, I need some street cred here. So Linval, L- Linval asked me to do it. And Linval's like, why? He's like, hey, just do it. Yeah. Uh, also just do uh, Yinka Ayende at Saxy Prince. Yeah, man. <laughs> That's on his t- <laughs> Big <laughs> shoes to fill, though. That was because confused, Everson yeah, was doing that. And like, yeah. I don't want to be the guy to come in and like try to top Everson after that. Yeah, Everson was killing those. Yeah, but I mean, if not your defensive end, it's her. <laughs> got to be your quarterback. Right? I know. Again, though, That's if I'm the new quarterback, I got to come in and fill those shoes. You do. Emotional well, leader. I'm trying to think back. Did Keenum ever do one of those pregame ones? Did, did Teddy? Teddy? Ted God seems no. too, way too chill. God no. Yeah. If they, if Teddy or Case did it, it wasn't. It wasn't like I'm it takes a certain skill set to be able to do that and rally around. Because I mean, guys. I don't know if you guys remember, in especially in 2015, they used to do like the the mini huddles per position, yep. where they would break they'll do those breakdowns. I think they so still I, do in the tunnel, in a tunnel, like tight yeah. ends and receivers yeah, exactly. have their little moment. Here's Safeties the whole thing: they would not do them if there wasn't cameras. Well, like all these started in like the 90s because for some reason I distinctly remember NFL films doing like the Cowboys DBs. Really? It may have been when Zimmer was the defensive back coach, but it was like, uh, all right, uh, Hanson, if you get down, lay down. If you lay down, stay down. It's like, how are you going to remember all that? That's too wordy. Remember Drew Brees' in like 2012? Well, I was going to ask you guys. Ray Ray? Breeze, <laughs> Ray's was so stupid and self-aggrandizing. But like, agreed. Yeah. But like, but like at the time though, Drew like Brees we had is, never seen anything. Drew Brees like was so, hype though. It was yeah, hype Jesus. as hell. And that was after like the Katrina thing and yeah. everything. Yeah. And also, I, I, I think he got that from Army Rangers. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, I remember back. I, I was like paraphrasing actual history. I was like, so I heard a guy. You told me. This, yeah, yeah. Uh, also, uh, working the board today. Uh, uh, pulling in. Is he, or is he pulling out? Uh, producer Eric is uh, R.I.P. He, 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 is, he is living. He, he's currently alive. Yeah, dude. He's dead. He's dead to Andy. He's on, <laughs> he, he's on life support. No, he's good. We like him better than you. Yeah, yeah, it's true. I'm, I'm here. I'm the, uh, the the third stringer. Yeah, but Thomas here. Uh, Arif is not because Arif pulled the Luke. He, he, he traveled without telling anyone. <laughs> I forgot. Yeah. That, that was, that he's was like, like, I'm in New York. Yeah. Now all of a sudden, Arif's like, today, he's like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm in New York. No, it, except, like, what? see, it's one thing to go from MSP to JFK. You went to Singapore. I went to Thailand, dude. Whatever. It's the same thing. <laughs> not a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. You guys do that on the weekends? Yeah. Uh, we're going to have a fill-in here. We're going to have Eric Thompson of the Daily Norseman. He's going to be sitting in here. Uh, we'll talk a little uh, Cardinals recap. Uh, ooh, we'll play a little how many and uh, look ahead towards the Jets. Um, but, uh, Luke, how's your week? What's going on? Week was good. Chopping up some more Cardinals tape so far. Um, 
Obviously, we'll get into a lot of it. Thielen, Hunter, uh, that defense was outstanding. I think the biggest stat for me, Cardinals were 0 for 10 on third down conversions. 0 for 2 on fourth. So that's 0 for 12 if you're keeping... Tabs at home. Tom. That's how we, that's how they, no, I mean, I'm trying you to add it up in my dude. head. And, uh, uh, so yeah. that's all for 12. I'll help you out. 0 for 12, uh, which I just thought. And, and not, they weren't all third and seven or third and long. There's a lot. I just watched them all. There were a lot of third and threes, a lot of third and, third and shorts. And uh, that defense, man, suffocating, of course, for a rookie quarterback like Josh Rosen, who, let's be honest, outside of Fitz and not much of a running game, doesn't have a ton of help. Yep. But, yep. We'll, we'll get, man, we'll that get was outstanding, dude. Uh, Tom, what's going on? at zonecoverage.com besides Jimmy Butler watch. Yeah, no, a lot of Jimmy Butler stuff. <laughs> Obviously, uh, Dane Moore has done a great job with the Wolves this year. Uh, Sam Ekstrom, daily Vikings piece on the site. And then uh, check out Wild Content. Heather, Giles, Ben. Giles and Ben obviously have their podcast as well. Uh, lots, of, lots of craziness going on in, uh, in Minnesota sports. Maybe not all good for the, uh, the teams as a whole, but we're covering it closely. Uh, and also become a scriber, become someone, and also uh, you, you could be Tom's BFF. Uh, Sure, at, I, in, fine. In terms of uh, promotions, like we should pick one new, sub, well, one subscriber sure. and invite them to to the, the zone coverage Christmas party. Yeah, can you imagine? It was. Uh, I remember just all the standing water at the end of that, uh, and it probably was not all water. Yeah, at the end of the party. Oh. oh. And they have to be beer pong partners with Riles. Riles is a pro. Riles, is, I've been talking to him. He's been practicing, working on his, his stroke. He's a, he's a good player. Riles, we're kind of stroke. No, no way. <laughs> All right, so check that out, as well as uh, subscribe on the iTunes. Uh, give us a follow on uh, Zone Coverage on Twitter at Zone Coverage MN. Uh, Eric Thompson is in the building. Wow. And, see, this is great. Fashionably late, but fashionable yeah. as well. <laughs> no, see, this that. is great, too, because it takes the mic away from Tom. I can still yell. I'm loud. Good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's hook him up with some headphones so we can get rolling. Uh, so, Inca, uh, how was your week? It was good, man. Um, you know, it's getting, getting a lot of work done and whatnot. Um, got some work accomplished over the weekend. I, I think I told you guys about some, uh, you know, some photos I was taking. So, got those out <laughs> to the... Now, do, do, yeah, do we have your already? permission to turn that into a full-on meme? Because it, it has it has its... Uh, it's uh, way it's yeah. way better when, when we're memeing in our group chat versus versus on the timeline. It's fair. Yeah, yeah. we can we can be a little racier with that, so that's good. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's race have to do with Yinka, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Uh, uh, hey, can I tell you a joke about Adam Thielen? And, uh, no, never mind. Okay. <laughs> uh, Eric, <laughs> how was your week? How have you been? Um, good. Uh, besides being late here, um, the wife got into a fender bender sure, on, her right? way, on her way. Yeah, she's yeah, fine. Yeah, sure, Car's right? dinged up. But it's great. But uh, yeah, so that's why I was late. Other than that, but it's been was, fun. So she was fine, though. Yeah. Which I feel like Ooh. less of an well, He probably yeah. would have opened with Yeah, yeah I mean, my, you could have opened done. with that. See, yeah. Is it one of those where uh, the damage is purely cosmetic, but you still get that insurance check and you just slide it right in the pocket? Um, well, we're probably going to trade it in when we sell our house and all that fun stuff. So it, yeah. it probably hurt the resale or the trade-in oh, value on it. Is so. that uh, we you're doing a, hey, buy this house, we'll throw in a car? No, we're just taking... <laughs> Taking some of the proceeds of the of oh, the gotcha. sale of the old house, yeah. but yeah. All right, so, so. Y- yeah, Yinka. Um, actually, Eric, I'm glad you're here because uh, we need to talk about what happened last <laughs> week. Oh boy, oh, let's talk about it. Um, why? <clears throat> What happened? Why? So, so we were. Um, it wasn't even me originally who were having the conversation. Uh, Miles Gorm, friend of the show, one of my friends. He love Miles, wide receiver two. Great wide receiver two. Love Miles. Um, <laughs> so he was having the conversation with uh, one of the, you know one of the people who are friends of the pod, and they're just kind of going back and forth. And he, you know, he mentioned he was like. They were talking about Odell, and he was just like, "Well, you know, Adam Thielen and Stephon Diggs would would never, you know, throw those kind of tantrums or something <laughs> like that." And I saw that as kind of hyperbolic because I think there was enough instances where we've seen both players um, do, you know, throw various tantrums and stuff, which is for me is perf- perfectly fine. Like these players, like they're they're passionate, they care about what they're doing. Mm-hmm. I I'm more than okay with you seeing them blow off a little bit of steam so and then i as i was looking for the just for the both of them i was noticing well i couldn't find as many uh, on stefan Diggs, but i found like four or five on adam thielen so i i created that i was just like oh well you know here are the examples of adam thielen 
rightfully so. What's race got to do? We're rightfully so, like, this. blowing off some saying, throwing his helmet on the ground, throwing his... Uh, uh, Mouth guard. I yep. mean, there was a few. There was even that just the p- previous week, him getting into a little bit of an altercation with uh, Jalen Mills. And well, I mean, it's because Jalen Mills has the most punchable face in the league. That probably probably true. Yeah. So I mean, I was just trying to dispel the fact that like it's it's honestly okay if these players throw these tantrums because I mean they care about what you do and when you're passionate about what you do I mean it's, it's going to get you heated it's going to get you sometimes you want to punch a net sometimes you want to punch a wall sometimes you want to throw your helmet um, and I've been trying to go viral for a while <laughs> <laughs> but not for that reason. Um, and I noticed that people were misunderstanding what I was saying or the point that I was trying, the premise of what I started tweeting about um, and kind of interjected their own narrative into the into the story. Now, like, I, now is, let's be honest. Like People have just been looking for a way to shit on here. They're like, I really just want to dunk on Yinka, except <laughs> I, I don't have an in yet. Oh, there it is. There it is. And... And well, the thing is, is like you people just don't like Odell Beckham Jr. for one reason or another. And like that's perfectly within your right. Yeah, they're, but, they're all Bama fans. Yeah, and, you can, and you can't obviously you can't compare someone like Adam Thielen, homegrown. A lot of the fans love him. He's playing really, really well right now. Um, and you can't compare those two because people are going to be like, well, this is I see this guy as a diva and I see this guy as, you know, as professional as they come. Whereas I was just making the comparison like, hey, this if this behavior is something that you have a problem with, I would think that you would have a problem with it across the board. That that's not the case because I learned so much about what a tantrum was <laughs> this past week. I learned about how frequently you can have a tantrum for it to be considered a tantrum, the the, the severity in which you can have a tantrum yeah. for it to be considered you got a, a tantrum. Four-year degree now. Yeah, tantrum, yeah, exactly. Right? We need a reef in here because what's his tantrum DVOA or, or just exactly? A I need to, I need to know the spread on on tantrums and stuff. <laughs> a T Y A. And yeah. then. Like, obviously, Eric Thompson makes a hilarious joke on on the I whole thing. I fan the flames. Though. Yeah, I I I I kind of ran with it with the <laughs> the what people th- would think the underlying meaning was. Yeah. I said it was because Adam or because uh, Odell Beckham is blonder Blonde. than yeah. And Adam the, the, the what I found was it's like people were injecting um, the con- the narrative about race, right? And for me personally. I, I do not shy away from topics on race. If I want to mm. talk about it, I'll talk about it head on. I do. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> but but this was this was one that I really was not this was this wasn't about race at all. It was about the behaviors that I saw that I thought was hypocritical. Even people asked me, Hey, were you making this about race? And I flat out said, No, this is about hypocrisy. I saw people kind of I, I just I personally don't think we're the Patriots. I don't think that we're we have been consistently good enough for the last couple of years for us to have uh, you know, except, except for like the, the five Super Bowls. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. So, I mean, I, I just saw it. And I'm like, you know, wait, let's pump the brakes on like saying that our players are, you know, holier than thou when we've seen them. Um, you know, we've seen them throw temper tantrums. We've seen them, you know, get upset. We've seen them do things that I mean, especially our organization of all organizations when it comes to whether it be on the field or off the field type stuff. But um, I wasn't at all defending Odell in the respects of like that little Wayne interview that he did. I thought that was not. Yeah. Why is that a thing? I, like, I, I know he released a mediocre album. But yeah. Come on. <laughs> I just like I, I didn't agree with the way that Odell handled that at all whatsoever. But again, the premise of everything that I was talking about was all on the field because that's I mean, that's what we're, we're here for, what they do yeah. on the field. And um, I have not learned my lesson because at the end of the day, I'm still going to challenge hyperbole. Better or worse than the case Keenum was a fraud fallout? I've, I've discovered that I have a skill, and it's the skill to piss off a lot of people in a short period of time. And uh, uh, I would say this one pissed off way more people than the Case Keenum <laughs> thing. Yeah, I was just getting some. Uh, I had some fire on the side yeah. compared to you. But, when yeah. when when Twitter asks you, "Hey, you're getting a lot of uh, traffic through this thing. Do you want to turn off notifications?" <laughs> you should probably <laughs> listen to what they're they're saying because you know, like at the end of the day, like. I welcome discourse, right? I want to engage. Like, no, I, f- I found out that no one was actually disagreeing with like Adam Thielen actually throwing a tantrum. It's just that they didn't want it juxtaposed against a guy like they Odell. didn't want him compared yeah. to Beckham because they think, rightfully so, 
with off the field stuff, Beckham definitely does more. But again, I was saying personally, I had to clarify after the joke I made was that I have no problem with either player. Yeah, and I think that's what you're saying them. either. I, yeah. And I, I get that Beckham rubs people the wrong way off the field. On the field, he's excellent. He does crazy stuff on the sideline. He yeah. gets fired up, but he's always giving it 100% out there. Absolutely. And that's what you want. Absolutely. And that's what you want. And like, I was personally saying, I have no problem with either of them. Uh, I think they're both fantastic. I think they're both great and for the league. Um, because sometimes you do want to just, you want to see your players passionate. Because let's be honest, this is a job and some players just treat it as such. This is a play. This is where I can make a lot of money, and I'm going to try to make a lot of money, and I don't really care if we win or lose. Um, whereas guys like Odell, guys like Adam Thielen, Stefan Diggs, you can tell each and every week that they want to win, and it frustrates them. Like Odell, when you see him throw those temper tantrums and you're talking about giving context to what Adam Thielen was, what about the context as far as Odell? He's tired of losing. He's tired of playing with a mediocre quarterback. He's tired of, honestly, making these circus catches and still getting blown out by, you know, 20-some points or whatever. So, I don't, again, I just I don't have any issue with either of them, and I don't have any issue with, quote-unquote, the tantrum, as long as it's not hurting themselves or the team. He seemed pretty okay with losing at LSU. No big deal. <laughs> Shout out Hobie. No, he'll be back. His quarterback was Zach Mettenberger, though. So. Yeah. Well, in the That's pantheon of three. SEC quarterbacks, Mettenberger is like top it's actually 50. Pretty good. Yeah. I, I don't. Uh, well, I mean, it was both him and Jarvis Landry, though. The yeah. talent I mean, they had on that team, though. It was, was, was like ridiculous. Jeremy Hill. It was uh, like. Yeah, Land- they, I mean, Jarvis is on there, too, right? Yeah, they yeah. had so many players on both sides of the ball. Uh, speaking of uh, ball, let's get into it. So, Cardinals, uh, Vikings prevail 27 to 17 over the Arizona Cardinals at U.S. Bank Stadium, taking care of business like they should have in the Bills game, but whatever. Um, it looked like that the Zimmer Hellfire defense, Luke, you alluded to, 0 for 10 on third down, which hasn't really been an issue all year. Uh, I think their third down percentage is around 27 ish. Last year, the record was 25.2. So, eh. They're at, no they're at 25 right now. They're actually oh, slightly that? below. Yeah. Yes. What? Yeah. yeah, they're actually better yeah. than they were last year somehow. Wow. Yeah. 0 for, 0 for 10 well, will do that. Yeah. And, then, and then again, I mentioned fourth down. They're 0 for 2. So 0 for 12 on third and fourth down. That's insane to me. Um, and again, I mentioned yeah, they're not yeah. all But also long. Mike McCoy. <laughs> Mike McCoy, true. <laughs> they're not all third and long, though, either. Some of a, th- a lot of third and threes and things like that. You think you get one on accident somehow, right? Again, uh, Mike McCoy. Mike McCoy. Yeah, yeah David Johnson, sure. Christian Kirk. Right. The, the corpse of Ricky right. Seals Jones. Come on. Seals Jones. Yeah, no, it was uh, it was good. It was really good. Was I feel bad for Fitz. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it seems like he doesn't even really. Oh, thank you. Should I pay you? That's great. That's a lot. It's like a Dasani. Uh, I feel bad for Fitz too, just because you know what a class act he is. He deserves one. I always go back to that Pittsburgh Super Bowl. They were so close. Big Ben leads him back. Santonio Holmes, buck thirty left. Uh, but that touchdown right before half, the pick six, the pick six, and Fitz was right there, man. Almost bumped him out. That could have been the difference in a Super Bowl. Mm. Uh, Fitz bumped him out. It looked like at the two yard line, but was it James Harrison? Yeah, James Some Harrison. Steelers yeah. S- snuck in, and uh, yeah, because the, the uh, one know fit the one play James Steel Harrison drops into coverage and just steps in front yeah. of uh, Anquan Bolden. Yeah. I mean, freaking that team! Wild. Uh, also, um, Great we've game. talked about this before, but the score, uh, the last score for Arizona was Fitz touchdown running up the middle. It was a long touchdown. It was like, mm-hmm. that was a Super Bowl moment because. That was cool. uh, so I pulled up his playoff stats from this year because this doesn't get enough love. So. Wild card round, six Packers. for. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, this is a Super Bowl run. Uh, it's a wild card round. Falcons, uh, six catches, one hundred one, a touchdown. Uh, divisional round at Car- at Carolina. Uh, Carolina was a big favorite that year. Eight for one sixty six, and a touchdown. NFC title game versus Philly. He did. Uh, nine for 152 and three. <laughs> no big deal. Fit, Super Bowl yeah. seven, 127, and, and the two touchdowns. He would have been Super Bowl MVP. Absolutely. Yeah. But whatever. <laughs> yeah. Santonio Holmes. Yeah, he deserves a ring. Sure. Great. And Ben. Neat. Yeah, it's yeah, the Min- it's now. the Minnesota that rubbed off on him. He can't he can't get escape it. Yeah. And he, he never won in Minnesota either as a player. He was just doing us a favor every time. Oh uh, yeah, and people forget like his senior year he went to a military academy in like Virginia. Like he's only at Holy Angels for like a year or two. Still Still, hashtag, still kind of, hashtag one of us, kind of. Well, I mean, see, see, that's the thing. Like, the past decade, it's always been bring Fitz home. It's like, kind of is home. I mean, Larry's a demigod down there. 
Like he could run for John McCain's vacant seat and he would win. And he's busy beating people up on the golf course too. He's like yeah. apparently an amazing golfer. Can't do that all year on Mr. Do it all. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, it, it's all right. Uh, in terms of the Vikings, uh, our you know, version of Larry Fitzgerald, I guess, Adam Thielen extends his 100-yard game streak to six to start the season. Uh, the record uh, for any time during the season is Kelvin Johnson with eight. Does he make it? No. Ah, come on. <gasps> Yanka, you're starting with it again. Uh, let's see. Weird. <laughs> just, just Weird. Yanka hating on Adam at Thielen. The Jets, wow. uh, at the Jets, I don't see why not. I, and then New Orleans next week, Sunday night, right? Is I that, think I think the next two? The reason why I say it, not the Jets, but I think New, uh, New Orleans might have something to say. You know, they might. <laughs> Let have you seen their defense this year? Yeah. Hasn't but I great. mean, it's it's less of their defense and more like, I mean, the, it's less of the The reason why I say yes is I see both those games easily could be high scoring games once again. And I, say, I know some people might think, well, it's the Jets. Vikings D should be able to suffocate them, mm-hmm. Sam Darnold, but they put in what, like 74 points the last two games alone. They put up, what, 40 plus on Detroit. So I think both these next two games could be high scoring, means Thielen, and at least the passing game, I think, continues to move along a little bit. Yeah. I'm going to say no, but for a slightly different reason, because I think teams are finally going to get sick of Thielen just, ba- it's death by 700 yeah. paper cuts, basically, right? is <laughs> exactly. what he's been doing yeah. through the first six games. I think they're probably going to finally start. Paying, you know, rolling more coverage over to him, double teaming him. I think we're going to see Diggs and Rudolph and maybe even Laquan Treadwell blow up one of these next two games. Mm-hmm. I think Ooh, Rudy's going to be due it'll be the inter- second half. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see uh, how the Jets defend because they, they run a lot of the high safety kind of stuff. Um, it's it's a lot different than the cover two things that the Arizona did last last week. But yeah, uh, you see, it'll be interesting to see where Morris Claiborne lines up because he's kind of he's their best corner. If he's on digs most of the time again, it's I think it's going to be more of the same and Thien will get his numbers. But if they're rolling more coverage up, have, having a safety help over the top, um, it'll it may Maybe they'll actually slow him down to you know maybe something crazy like 85 yards. Yeah. Can we just say Jamal Adams is their best corner? They just don't use him at corner. That's how good that guy is, though, right? He is very good. Okay. Uh, I think with that that four six front or that bare front that you're talking about, that single high safety, it seems like they would be really good at stopping the run. You know, they got they got all those guys in the box, but I think they're averaging allowing averaging narrator, over like a not. butt ten. Yeah, About they're, 10 on they're the middle ground. of the road. So, so they, they have that heavy front, that f- whether you want to call it 4-6 front or bare front, whatever, uh, but they're still averaging a lot on the ground, too. So And, and again, if you're going to do that, play single high safety, um, you're going to be susceptible to some big plays. But yeah, you're right. Eventually, some team is going to say, okay, we're done with Thielen. Mm-hmm. Let's just double him and shut him down. Uh, Tom, cue up some Avril uh, Levine music. Okay. For no, no reason, but <laughs> yeah, just dude, to have it handy. Have that on cue, yeah. ready to roll. Dude. I'm like, surprised he doesn't have it. it. It's like having a sandwich in your pocket. Hey, Tom, that's just in fast. case. That's yeah. fast. <laughs> uh, putting a bow on the Cardinals game. Do so defensively, uh, Anderson Day was out with a groin because I'm sure it's getting a lot of work. But uh, Georgia Loka started, uh, played the bulk of the snaps. Anthony Harris worked in there as well, made a couple impact plays, and of course, Curse got his. Uh, how do you guys see the the back end of that Vikings defense uh, playing out once Sandejo gets back? It looks like he's going to play on Sunday. It's good because I mean, you know, obviously losing Mike Hughes is pretty huge, but I think we're starting to discover that the Vikings have a lot more depth at safety as well too. So you might see, could you see four safeties on the field at the same time? With the fact that, you know, you have a well, lot of trust in considering one's more of a nickel corner now, yeah. at least in the big nickel. Exactly. Anyways, mm-hmm. talking about curse, yeah. Yeah. maybe. Yeah, yeah. An- Anthony Har- Anthony Harris has really been balling up, so I he can him. he can He's come out great. and play some coverage for you, um, and then just have Trey Waynes and Xavier Rhodes on the side. Like obviously, you have either you know big nickel looks, you have really beautiful dime looks. I mean. I would not be surprised if I don't see the Vikings in base defense very much for the rest of the season with this. I don't know if Zim even knows yet exactly right. what he wants to do, and that's okay. It's still early. There's still a lot of different uh, things to experiment with, I think is the key word. But I think uh, Sandejo, when he's come, when he's back and healthy, I think he's going to be the guy. Uh, uh, no brainer about that. But I think they continue to find ways to get Georgia Loka involved and, and keep J. Ron Curse, I think, flirting around in that nickel role because, again, and, and it's a shocker to me more than anybody, else because he's been so good as a nickel corner what how uh, it, it's uh, the it's X2 route it's working yeah, yeah it's, no, it, it is it is really exactly what the vikings hope that uh, anton Dixon would be mm-hmm. and he, well he coming was out of virginia tech yep. yeah flirted at both corner outside inside and safety but um 
And then, yeah, Georgia Loka, that was a, a really a breath of fresh air for me because I hadn't really done a real deep dive onto him yet. And it was just good to see. I was kind of just going to wait and see what he had. I wasn't going to go back and look at all the Cincy tape and whatnot. And just to see him out there running around, playing full motor, didn't skip a beat. Uh, looked like, uh, like he said, I think, before after the game, riding a bike. Well, he looked yeah, good. It, he looked good. He looked like just he has natural. been. Yep. Looks like he has been a starter in a Mike Zimmer style defense mm-hmm. in the last five years or something. Fun. 2019 or something. One one guy has to leave town. Who remain? All right. So question is, who remains here? 2019 Vikings. Uh, Aloka Sandejo. Yeah, I think the money's going to play a big factor in that. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I don't think. Imagine that Aloka's going to take the take minimum him. again. Yeah. He just loves being here. If that's the case, then it's Aloka because uh, Sandejo's do. Uh, I'm guessing a pretty decent pay bump. He, he yeah. is 31. He is the oldest guy on the I'm team. I'm getting, exactly, I'm getting nitpicky, but. but the age, the money, the the minor injuries here, or there, which have just kind of been consistent when you look at just the last two or three years, and then, you know, I mean, and I love his aggressiveness. And you know Zim's chirping in his ear. We need you to be that that kind of that strong safety, that hammer, ultra aggressive guy. But there's been a lot of penalties, a lot of fines, and things like that too. I'm leaning George Aloka, but again, I'm being nitpicky. Yeah, and it's yeah. it's a it's a great option to have between the two, I think. But I would, if given the choice between the two, I think both financially, you look at their age, and you just look at the track record. Okay, you listen to people on Twitter. Sendejo basically just launches head first on every single play at everyone. <laughs> yeah. It's not that bad, really. It isn't. He's got to do it. But um, Aloka probably would lean towards right now. Uh, random uh, aside, so in the book, Collision Low Crossers covers the, I think it was 2011 Jets. Uh, two Vikings make cameos. Uh, Sendejo comes over um, from Dallas. You know, Rob Ryan was the defense coordinator down there, so he came up to Rex, and he was just like, I, I have no idea what I'm doing, but I- I'm here, whatever, because they signed him on the back end of the season. Uh, and then also, they scouted Fusco, because, you know, Slippery Rock connection there. And I remember that Fusco was like, well, uh, yeah, it's tough being an offensive lineman sometimes because uh, we, we don't always get all the women. I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, poor guy, but whatever. We actually got, he's doing well in Atlanta. We should retain him. Better than I thought he would. We should retain him and John Sullivan and not Khalil. Yeah. Super we're, Bowl bound. We're, weren't we saying that like Sullivan was on his way out of he Well, just, just the neck injury alone, everyone figured he was at yeah. the end or literally done with his career. Yeah. 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 And, and that year in Washington, it looked like he lost 30 pounds, so he just looked like this old, sad, bearded dude uh, in a raincoat in Washington. Yeah, but he looks, it tells you just how depleted in general O line play is yeah. in the league. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and now, and now Sullivan. I thought he was done. He's the no center way. on the best <laughs> offensive line in the league exactly. right now. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And, he's, well, and he's the worst offensive lineman there, and he's still playing really well. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Their we, tackles are like fourth and fifth right now. It's right. ridiculous. Can we bring back uh, Vlad Dukas, too? Face the franchise. Charlie yeah. Johnson. He is also a person. Okay. <laughs> Charlie Johnson. Jeremiah, elite. Jeremiah Searles. I don't know. I don't think he is. Is it Searles in Buffalo, too? Yeah, Searles yep. is in <laughs> Buffalo, so it's Vlad. He's getting the gang back why, together. Why is, this th- why is this a thing? Um, do you guys believe in the curse of the 27-yard line? With uh, the Dalvin and the Hughes, I where was Adrian's? I, I think it's too impossible to be 26. true. <laughs> well, and there's only two of them. Yeah. I mean, that's if that's we true. can find Adrian's, then we might we might have something. But well, that was that was just uh, Washington's field. Uh, Washington's well, we, we can't determine it because Which Washington because you can't line the Washington's <laughs> turf because it's just mud. You can't paint liquid. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough. Yeah, uh, something that isn't tough though is uh, getting your swerve on and uh, laying down a shekel or two, as uh, Luke enjoys doing from time to time. We MyBookie.ag is the place to go. Business for years, rock solid reputation, and uh, also two business days on cash out. So when, when, when Luke has the opportunity to cash out, when he hits that, how many teams are in the NBA? 30? Yes. When he hits that 15 team parlay. NBA parlay. Parlay. <laughs> He's cashing it out in two business days. And it's the only service that we'd recommend for our listeners. Uh, and it's the only place that we wager because also the mobile site is super easy to chase your your your, your losses. I, I mean, make more investments. It's great. MyBookie.ag. And if you use promo code ZONE100, Z-O-N-E-100, uh, you get 100% deposit bonus up to 1000 bucks. So MyBookie.ag today, ZONE100 promo code. You play. You win, you get paid. Uh, putting a bow on the Cardinals. So, running game guy going. Yeah, Hello. that was fun. First rushing touchdown of the year. Five yards. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, I, Flo Souther. So, Dalvin, you know, some injuries concern piling up. 
Mike Boone, Rock Thomas, they like him. Probably won't be ready, ready in year two. Ready, ready in year two. Latavius is going to be a free agent. Do they bring him back next year? I would like to. Yeah. I, I, I'm always in the camp that you can always draft these guys in the fourth and sixth round, but I just like Murray the way he fits what Zim wants to do. Yeah, especially the way that he runs. I mean, I can't stress enough how much better he looks this season than he did last season. I mean, we saw it in Coming training camp. Ankle, yeah. yeah, just he just, he looked leaner and quicker and he's hitting the you know, he's going north and south and that's really what you need when the run black run blocking is so suspect is just someone that can get through the hole as small as it may be sometimes. Um, but again, on Sunday that was an absolute revelation with how mm. much better, especially the interior of the line blocked. Uh, I, they brought in David Morgan a lot. Um, uh, Sam Ekstrom, our, our buddy, uh, pointed out that uh, four of their five runs that went over 20 yards were out of that 12 personnel. Yeah. So I think you might see a lot more of that um, to get the running game going. When you have David Morgan and uh, Rudolph out there, just more bodies in the middle. Uh, I think uh, the, the rushing attack can it, this is mm. possibly, you know, I don't think they're going to go for 195 every week, but I think it'll be more sustainable. Yeah, because uh, that, that first Murray touchdown, they, they were in 12, and then they had uh, they had Rudy uh, in line on the left, and then they had David Morgan behind him, and then they motioned in Treadwell. It's like, oh, yeah, I wonder if we're going to run over there. <laughs> right. And it was great. Also, Rudy made a block. What the hell is going on? He's, Cats and dogs living together. He's been really good. I mean, both run and pass blocking. Actually. Pass blocking, Rudy, I still think, is a little this suspect. Game, he he has, the blocking has been better, no doubt. Mm-hmm. But the, special, um, the one thing uh, Matthew Kohler po- pointed out in his article today was how well Rudolph is doing on the wide receiver screens, all the quick mm-hmm. passes out to mm-hmm. Diggs and Thielen. He's doing a really good job of getting that first guy, opening up some blocks for him. I know uh, one of Thielen's first big catches he had on Sunday, Rudolph sprung him for about nine or ten extra yards. Uh, he, Which are not easy, by the way. Those quick screens, those bubble screens. Yeah, yeah, I mean, They're you're out there. You're out there in space, dude. You know, blocking some of the quickest guys in the field. Right. Uh, and and uh, also, you know, lost in the hoopla of Adam Thielen and uh, you know Stefan Diggs. That you know, Kyle Rudolph is off to probably the best statistical start in his career. Twenty-seven catches, two sixty-six, and two touchdowns on thirty-one. Because uh, we talked coming in, it's like, uh, well, John D. Philippa loves his tight ends. Look at Philly. Look at Gary Barnkowski. Back in the day with the Browns, but he loves his athletic tight ends. Yeah, well, well Conklin is uh, is also a guy. I, I think he had one snap, but it's okay. Yep, we're working on. Yep, <laughs> yep. <laughs> Why don't you start that a thing? Uh, our, our, at Kyle Rudolph, K Rudolph A two. Well, ha- ha- weren't we saying that like of of Vikings players, Kyle Rudolph probably cares about his his media presence the most, or his perception on like social media. Because like he wants to present a, a clean yeah. image, sure. For sure, but like he's like if he's the only one that like probably consistently blocks people on Twitter. The only person I, I know I, I, that he blocked was Ted randomly. I don't, and he still <laughs> and Ted still doesn't know. Ted why. got blocked. I yeah, blocked Ted didn't even by Rudy. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, I Bucket think list. I don't know about social media, but he definitely uh, he's out there at just about every team event and doing mm-hmm. a whole bunch of his own because mm-hmm. he's he's kind of the face of the franchise in that respect mm-hmm. of where he's he it's is the just out man. Yeah, yeah, he is definitely the the community. Him and his wife, and, and now kind of Thielen and Caitlin, yeah, I believe, yeah, uh, are, yeah. are kind of following in suit. So also random, uh, I think Jaron Curse went on a blocking spree, so now I'm I'm like checking to see if I got Thanos. <laughs> ah, no, I'm still there. Still there. Yeah, it's great. Just don't add players. I mean, I don't get why. Well, it's tough, too. I mean, a lot of these players, uh, I mean, they came up, I mean, they grew up with social media. I mean, yeah. sure, they had Twitter in high school and whatnot, and, like, uh, everyone kissing their ass all this time, and then all of a sudden just gets savaged. It's like, th- this is her my psyche. Like, it's a good thing that Treadwell doesn't have Twitter. Yeah, you guys are going to have to deal with my mom when Quinlan gets back in the league. It's going <laughs> to be fun. Like... Can he take Jalen Myrick's spot? Because uh, I was told on Twitter.com the last couple days that Jalen Myrick was the truth, and then they cut him from the practice squad. I mean, I I personally like Jalen Myrick over yeah. Craig James, but I mean, you know, considering the fact that you locked my you lost Mike Hughes, um, you know, they needed to have some uh, stability or just security for that nickel position, so it made sense. And it's kind of swapping out a gopher for a gopher. I mean, James. Did yeah. Start yeah. There. I yeah. Mean, he, he's he's a Southern Illinois guy. But yeah. He, he, yeah. What's David Cobb up to besides getting ready for the XFL? 
Uh, I think uh, I don't know if he's gonna play for the AAF. Yeah. I don't think he is, but he probably is getting God, ready. Oh no no no! Hold on, senior bowl Wait, in twenty fifteen. Everybody, time I mean, stamp this. We, we, need, we need to people. consult Everybody, with ever. the intellectual property lawyer. We need to petition Jim McMahon. At Jim McMahon. Wait, no. Vince McMahon. We can at Jim McMahon, too. Why not? Uh, the Min- Minnesota XFL team has to be called the Minneapolis Miracles. What would, what would yeah. their mascot be? <laughs> no. uh, Diggs. Diggs holding up the football like this. <laughs> no, no. Diggs chucking his helmet. Yeah. I, I still want to know where that landed. Do we have coaches film of the helmet chuck? Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, he's, he's already signed to one of the AAF teams. I want to know if, like, some eight-year-old kid got brained. No, I think it still landed on the field. Yeah. It, yeah. He, he he threw it sideways. I think it still landed somewhere in the end zone. What we need to know about is w- what happened to that flag that was thrown by that referee. It's, no one knows. Just magically. Just like back. When he up. threw his helmet, there was a flag that was thrown and then yeah. just missed. Yeah, they didn't even back up that extra, uh, the the two-point conversion that no one took. Yeah. yeah. It's, I, I still think if they hadn't sent any players out there, I just want them to run it in just to be, <laughs> just to be dicks. <laughs> <laughs> Although I don't think Keenum uh, w- would be that guy. Uh, also, uh, something we're going to do uh, is we're going to play uh, how many. Uh, so I'm going to throw out a scenario, uh, and then you guys tell me uh, how many. It's pretty, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, first up, how many? <laughs> Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. How many wide receivers would you take over Adam Jerome Thielen right now? Uh, Not counting Diggs. Okay, so because Diggs was one of mine. Yep. I would probably take... Is this for one game or like you're starting forever. a team forever, okay, forever on your roster so you instead of guys. so you instead don't of Adam Thielen? You don't like Fitz, who's 38 years old. Probably two, at uh, Odell Beckham Jr. and Antonio Brown. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, Eric, I gotta go Antonio go right Brown there. ahead of him. As far I mean, everyone else is kind of. That's it. Antonio's really? the only one I'd definitely put in front of him. Boy. Julio has the, the skills. He, he still racks up yards. He's allergic to the end zone for some just odd this reason. Year, yeah. I think his oh, OCs I mean, are allergic for him. And yeah. yeah. Just this three years. So I mean, they're out. pulling and him out would, of the game. It, it, third and three at the goal line. And the other one I'd probably put ahead of him is DeAndre Hopkins. Yes. Just because Hopkins he is an absolute freak in catch. Freak. I mean, look at what he's had at quarterback. Thank yeah. you. For, that's that's my guy. Career. I think Nuke, Brown, you got to get Brown. Nuke Sorry. is a modern day Fitz. Yes. Yep. And, and and as good as Watson can and will be someday, he's still not there. I can't wait and hope someday Hopkins has that top 10 quarterback to play with because he deserves it. It's like Fitz. Like you said, he deserves it. Well, I got, he might have a top 10 quarterback, but he also needs people to block for that quarterback. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, I got Nuke. Um, I, I still got to take Julio, man. He's just such a freak. Uh, and Brown, and then Thielen at four. So I just heard Jarvis Landry. <laughs> and, uh, how many uh, Pro Bowlers are on this team? And yes, but not going to play in the Pro Bowl because they're going to the Super Bowl, that whole thing. <laughs> well, uh, it always has to okay. be that thing. Because right. if, you, if you ever ask any Pro Bowl question on Twitter, it's like, <laughs> it's like well, right for Super here's Bowl. Here's the problem with the Pro Bowl. As we know with all All-Star games, half of it's a popularity contest. Not actually who's playing the best, always. But Harry, I played five. Hunter, Rhodes. And I say Rhodes with an asterisk because I think it's just a, somewhat of a big name. I think he'll mm. end up getting voted in. Those three, I don't think Barr or Kendricks are playing at a high enough level right now. Uh, Linval should, will he? Not sure. But three for me on defense. Um, and then Thielen. I don't know. Is Diggs going to get... I mean, so many good receivers. I don't know. Is Diggs going to get thrown in? Um, I, I got four. I I'm probably missing somebody big, but I got four. I have five. I'll have uh, Linval mm-hmm. on so the defensive, Linval, you defensive side. I would go Linval. And then I would have uh, Tennille Hunter on the defensive mm-hmm. side. And then offensive side, uh, I would go oh, both... Not Harry, not yet, not yet. I I, I don't think Harry I has had. I don't you. think Harry's had one of those games where I'm just like, that's Harrison Smith. You San know? Francisco. He's made the splash plays, but he's he's not struggled many. in coverage this yeah. year a little bit. Nice. And then on offense, I'd probably go Thielen, obviously Diggs, and then I probably would give it to Kirky. You know, just give him, give him the nod. As of right I guess now, that would be my fifth. As of Kirk. right now, I would give him the nod. Yeah. yeah I mean, are we talking just the the first round of Pro Bowl? First, first not vote, not yeah. the not the not 14, the alternate, the 14th alternate, alternate, alternate. Yeah, because. I'd almost have to put Kirk because who else in the NFC quarterback wise? Are there two other quarterbacks no, no. that are 
putting especially like well, the, yeah, Kirk has the number. Yeah, I mean Goff, Goff is definitely in there. Goff has and Breeze. To be. And then who's who else? I mean, who would also be on yeah, the, in, on the Ryan, NFC? Ryan Goff, Cousins. Yeah, I, could see so right. your, I mean, so, I mean, even Rogers right now isn't playing at a Pro Bowl. Level. Cousins borderline just because I, I think he's getting a lot of headlines. And everything in, as the, of, in the NFC, that's it. If he if he keeps up the current pace and the statistics he's putting up, although, and the Vikings actually win a handful of games mm-hmm. going forward, although, I think he'll Cam be. has been looking pretty good in the Norv offense. Blows that is the surprise of the year. What is happening? It's serious, right? He everywhere he goes, it's magic. How many uh, starts does Brian O'Neill make this year? So he's already has one. Uh, how many total for the season? I still think, uh, I don't know. He looked good enough to maybe warrant those coaches. I think coaches are just so, uh, they uh, don't want to have to start. Yeah. Honestly, oh, no. just start him, for the, start him for the rest of the season. Have yeah. your Rashad Hill. He's Rashad Hill is really the only guy that's capable of really being your true swing tackle. Which I, I don't think Brian O'Neill can do that. So why don't you just, I mean, he's playing well enough to start him for the rest of the season. So I would um, say, what, how many games left? Um, Ten I'm, left. I'm going to so say six. 11? Ten. So you think that it's going to take another month or so before he gets started getting? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, oh, or slash injury. I personally yeah. think it Reef should hit. be eleven. It should be eleven because that means the rest of the season going forward. Um, we'll see what happens when Reef comes back. I I think the best five that they have right now is Reef, Compton, Elfline, I guess Remmers, even though he's a better right tackle. No, but Brett, no Brett Jones? I like him as a backup. I know. But he's it's been, weird. Like, it's, it's nice to have a little depth if one weird, of the interior dude. guys goes down. But And O'Neal, uh, technically the highest rated yep. player from uh, PFF on their line. That's so. weird. Compton's the PFF superstar, too, and it's like, what do I He, he has been a that? very pleasant surprise to me this year. Yeah. Well... With the whole grading thing, like each play is in a vacuum. So yeah. he gives up big plays, but his overall level play has been pretty decent. Right. Yeah. Right. The, the bad is real bad, but overall he's been yeah. much better than expected. Right. All right. What is uh, how many how many hundred yard rushing games single player uh, do the Vikings have the rest of the season? They got one. So they got, they got one. I will say I think they're going to get really heavy into the run the second half of the season. Look, they know they can get into shootouts and 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 go blow for blow with these teams if you want to go shootout. That's great. How fun is that to even say? But that's not Zim. That's not Zim's blueprint. He doesn't want to do that. I think we get back to the running game uh, hey, he's and so ground and pound. He's like the dad in Footloose. In the second half, never seen it in the second half. Um, I'm going to say eight. I'm going to say eight. I think they get really back to the and, and then down wow. and come back. Mm-hmm. Even so if they're running well, I think they're gonna. I think they're gonna split it up enough. Uh, how many is Mike Moon and will Mike Boone's dad like have a heart attack on Twitter, <laughs> just mashing that just, like button? Just hearts all over the place on that on his tweet deck. I'm sure. And Morgan's uh, dad going nuts because Morgan yeah. blocked for him. Yeah. Morgan's dad's pretty pretty good on Twitter. Yeah, he's been good. Um, he's no Ricky Ellison. <laughs> I would say. I would say. Okay, they got one. I'll go an extra. Th- Three more. I think. I think the Vikings' running attack that last week wasn't a mirage, but I still think it's a passing league. There just aren't as many 100-yard rushers these days as Detroit Lions. But they finally got one. Gosh, we're tied with the Lions this year. Who would have thought that? But I, th- I think even if they do run for a buck fifty a game, you know, for a handful of games, I think that is going to be split up between Murray and Boone and uh, hopefully Dalvin Cook coming back here pretty well, and soon. You, too. And you hear a lot of hundred-yard games, but that's a lot of all purpose yards to to your point uh you know dallin cook 67 on the ground 52 in the air right you know i mean that's 100 yards from scrimmage 100 yards rushing i mean you guys are right it's 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 not as common as it used to be even just five years ago yep all right um this initially was interceptions but i'm gonna go fumbles because that's more topical so how many more fumbles does Kirk cousins have the rest of the way now he has six on the season Uh, he's lost two is that the leader for quarterbacks six is it yeah yeah he's lost four hasn't he yeah, he lost. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. He, he, yeah, he fumbled six, yeah, lost yeah, four. Yeah, I'm looking at the stupid recover number. So, um, <laughs> the streak. And we're only through six. Yeah, yeah. talk about we're the we're hunter and the Thielen streaks. Games. This is a good streak. Uh, All right. So, how many uh, more fumbles does Cousins have the rest of the way? Just, just fumbled, just not, fumbled not lost, not lost. Yeah. Um, so eight. he's got six through six games. I'm gonna say he has six more through the remaining eleven games. I say eight or ten games. I say eight more. Eight more. Yeah. Well. the no matter what it is, the number is too damn many. But um, I'll be a little more optimistic. But he's got at least five more in him. <laughs> wow! But but again, though, is that are these his? Fa- I mean, he's going to trust me. Coaches are going to beat this into his head. He's going to work on this. But is it him? 
or is it just this O line? It's a bit of both. It's, it's, it's both. It's both. If you're gonna lean one way in the fence, is it cousin being a little careless, moving up in the pocket, goofing around, or it's is it the O line's just like, all right, well, eventually they're gonna get somebody because I got three guys in my face every time. You just don't see it. It's a little bit of pocket presence. It has to be put on cousins. It's as unfair as it is on some of these snaps where basically the left tackle is just getting right. it, just turnstiled. Right. You kind of have to have that pocket presence to tuck it in to know that that guy's coming from behind. Yeah. And, and it's like yeah, you, you, you know what the protection yeah. is. Like you know that Rashad Hill's gonna be singled up against Chandler Jones. You'd be like, hmm, all right, internal clock, uh, move that up a tick. Well, I yeah, would just yeah. start sprinting right. to the right immediately. But right. Some, yeah, but, so, but some, of, some, of, some of those plays are coming from his right side. They're not coming from the blind side or whatever no, so it's like so over. it's like it, it it's a lot more excusable if your left tackle gets beat and obviously you just get hit from that you can't see it but you, you again when you're seeing Chandler Jones you should be able to at least feel that and that those are the kinds of those are the kinds of fumbles that I would put on Kirk Cousins because he should be able to either um, you know do a quicker hitch and immediately roll out or step up into the pocket and you're not see, you're not seeing that. Was it the one against the, I think Buddha made the play the scoop and score where he felt it he was moving God, up Buddha's but so he good. did this little mm-hmm. double pat and like another almost like hesitation clutch thing. Yeah, I just don't know pump, if, if, if maybe me. it's a certain way that he holds it in the pocket but it seems very swaddable back there mm-hmm. if he, if he has it has it back. Right. It just easily right. gets tapped out. Right. And yeah. again, it's some of it's bad luck, but w- in, when it happens this often, it's a thing. Yeah. It has to be. And, and again, we, are, we already that. knew uh, this is what we're getting into because it's baked in the cake. Cousins' last three seasons, starting 16 games each year, 13, 9, and 9 fumbles uh, in each of those seasons. 13, 9, and 9. Wow. Yeah. He's got six. Yeah. I, I was trying to look up his college numbers, except uh, I think uh, Michigan State hides things well. Because <laughs> 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 like, even on Sports Reference, it was zero. Zero, zero, zero. I was like, a baloney. I don't buy so they this. Knew. That's pretty heavy. Google it. Uh, last right. one, last one that we'll get onto the Jets. Uh, how many dollars would you pay for the Dolphins to start Osweiler week 15 U.S. Bank Stadium? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Um, Whatever. Can we get a GoFundMe just, just, here? Just, just, I, I, I'll, I'll put five on it. I, I'll I'll sure. I'll, I'll sure. throw in an extra few bucks on the, on the admission, uh, but I mean... Are we that scared of Tannehill? You just want to see Osweiler I, again I, in the I bank? Mean, purely, I went to the Texans purely game. Purely for the like, LOL value. Just for I, the I memes. Just for the yeah. memes. Yeah, that's worth it. 38-10, a of bucks. I want to say. Maybe 48-10. Cheryl's took one back. Patterson had one. It's a fun game. Osweiler got destroyed for four quarters in the bank. Yeah. So, and they yeah, even, they even played back, six maybe. offensive linemen throughout most of that game, too. That's right. <laughs> it was just like, yeah. Sam Brown. Bradford made one Brown. of the craziest sidearm throws to Jerry Red I've ever seen in my life that, Absolutely. that game. Did Bradford even make the trip on Sunday? To, oh, to, up here? Um, I, yeah, he did. He was. Did he? I, I saw him on the sideline. Yep, yep. Are, are you sure? Add on scruff going, street clothes? sweatpants. <laughs> yeah, yep. Street clothes. Uh, had just, the sunflower seeds. Just, just hammering checks. Just living the dream. Hammering checks, man. Uh, I forget if it's Say five or six. Checks. 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 Yes. With, I, I think the Cardinals owe him at least five million checks. next year, and I think the Broncos owe Case ten. And best and contract in sports, though. Oh, it's the Bobby Bonilla. Bobby yeah, there. still getting oh, happy. Bobby. Yeah, July Let's 1st, Bobby Bonilla Day. Yeah, For it's how much longer? Uh, till 2035. Is how much? $1.19 million yeah. every oh, year. Um, yeah, well, Brett, the, I know the Cardinals are saving a handful of dollars by not having him active because I think yeah. it's like 300000 a game, but still, hey. It's good work if you can get it. It's like, it's this almost economy. it's almost like their it. GM was in jail <laughs> during part of the off season. But <laughs> it's uh, almost 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 like that. Yeah. Uh, almost is uh, almost the team. The Jets. Um, so the Jets surprised last year. Not really, but uh, you know this year. I'm not gonna lie. Even for a bad team, they're pretty interesting, especially on offense. Uh, I think Darnold, I mean, he's living up to his USC reputation where he takes shots, sometimes not always warranted, and, and they do have some uh, capable playmakers, but the Vikings are three-point favorites, uh, and the over-under is 47. Uh, how, how do you gents see this thing playing out? I well, think it'll be go ahead. Go ahead. No, you. Go ahead. I I think it's going to be really similar to this this Arizona game. There's I mean there's obviously a lot of excitement with these r- rookie quarterbacks. I really loved Rosen going into, but I knew that he was going to struggle against this defense. I I think Darnold has shown a lot more than I thought he was going to this coming in this season. But again, I think we've seen enough of the Aaron throws, enough of the you know the certain inaccuracies um, all over the field really that I I think this is going to be a game where the defense is really going to be able to take advantage of. 
Um, and they have some playmakers on the other side of the ball. You know, Jamal Adams obviously is, is a baller, but I just don't think it'll be enough to slow down, you know, Adam Thielen's streak or um, Stefan Diggs. So I see it being uh, Vikings pretty win again pretty handedly. Nick, are you just waiting for teams to start uh, giving wide receiver one love to Adam Thielen, then Stefan Diggs can have like a 190 yard game? No, because I think teams have admitted that they see Stefan Diggs as wide receiver one, <laughs> which is why they keep putting their cornerback one on him. But, I mean, that's just me. Eric, what do you got? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> just keeps going. Um, I think that the Jets are similar to the Cardinals, but they're a better version. Mm-hmm. I think I think Darnold is a slightly... I, Who's going to end up better between he and Rosen is going to be debated over for years. I think Darnold came in as the most pro ready out of this class, and I think he's showing that he can just by being the youngest right. of them all. Which he, is pretty impressive. I watched a bunch of uh, his games uh, today actually, and he's he can really he's really good at uh, looking off safeties. Kind of do it. He had a really good on one of the touchdown passes against the Colts. Did this quick shoulder feint that made the defender bite and. Uh, got the wide open touchdown to one of the backup tight ends he can do all of the things required he checks all the boxes that said he can still do some crazily bad things the turnover bug has followed him just like uh it followed uh cousins from washington minnesota the turnover turnover bug followed Darnold uh, from USC to New York. It followed him across the country. He, he still makes some a lot of those rookie mistakes and I think with what the Vikings did with those, especially in those third down blitzes against Rosen last week, they can do a lot of that disguise and coverage, bringing pressure from places that they, he's not really expecting. Uh, having a Nunwa out with the high ankle sprain, that was his favorite target. I think he had 16 more targets than anyone else on the wow. team uh, this season. Robbie so, Anderson time. Let's go. Yeah, and I think um, they're two-headed. He's officially out. Yep, he's yep. out for three to four weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Pryor's questionable, I believe. Sounds like he'll start. Yeah, it sounds like he's going to play. Gonna play. Um, and, you know, Robbie Anderson is, he can hit, it, hit you up with big plays, but he's not very consistent. I think, you know, they're kind of feast or famine that on offense they have a good running attack that two head the two-headed attack between uh crowell and powell and, i mean they've been racking up yards especially the last two weeks again denver's and in indianapolis's run defense this year has not been anything to write home about i think the vikings especially the way they uh, the defense have been playing lately should keep them in check it's always uh if, if it gets close i think this is going to come down to if a team can jump out to a 10 point lead, it's going to look very different for either side because mm-hmm. the Jets, I think we've seen, you know, they have been such a roller coaster. I mean, they beat the brakes off of uh, Detroit the first week. Then they go on this terrible three game losing streak where they can barely get uh, 250 yards of offense. Now, the last two weeks, they've blown up for 76 points. I think a lot of that is game situation. When you, when Darnold, especially when you have a rookie quarterback in the uh, decent running game like they do, if you're up by 10 points, you look a lot different than when you're down by 10 points. And that defense is, uh, their second in takeaways this w- this year too. So that's yeah. another kind of bad combination with how uh, Cousins has been putting the ball on the floor and the the ball hawking that the Jets have done. That I could see, you know, all of a sudden you get in the Bill situation where you look up and it's thirteen nothing or thirteen to three or fourteen to nothing or something because the, the Vikings turned over, you know, put the Jets in good position. But again, I think the the Vikings have too much talent. They should win this game. I think it might, you know, be. They did, they haven't put the Vikings haven't put together a complete game yet this year. Yeah. That I mean there were there were some definite flaws in that Cardinals win. They they were up twenty seven to ten. They were rolling. They got an inter, the Harris's interception. They should have put that game away. They let the Cardinals hang around till the end. I mean they had to run out the clock there at the end. So if the Vikings put together a complete game, there's no doubt they can win. Which is, which is fine. I agree. The Vikings haven't, and I, I think that at, at, we kind of knew that that was going to be the case going into the season. We knew that Kirk is going to still you know, have to really learn. And pick up this offense, get, gain that chemistry with both Diggs and Thielen and Rudolph, um, and obviously having a new offensive coordinator, really know what what gels. And I think we're starting to probably see the offense gel a little bit more so. Um, and then even, I think it was Anthony Barr came out just today and just was talk, talking about how, you know, Zim has really just simplified things um, versus the last couple first couple of weeks of the season where everything was a little, probably a little bit more complicated, a lot more exotic, and now they're just kind of doing what they, they do do best. So, um it's good that we're we haven't peaked yet, and I'd much rather peak in December than um, than you know early October. 
Yeah, uh, not a ton to add to, to, to both of what you guys kind of broke down about this preview. Listen, Vikings, clearly the better team, top to bottom, talent-wise. I still think this is going to be a close game. Uh, I think they win it uh, in a low-scoring kind of fashion. I look at the biggest weaknesses on the Vikings team. It's still the pressure that's getting after uh, Kirk Cousins through the offensive line. I'm looking at Leonard Williams. Six overall pick. Nathan Shepard was a draft crush that's been Nate. looking really good. Uh, even Darren Lee is resurrecting his career this year in the front seven. So their front seven is going to be able to get after Kirk Cousins again on the road, uh, maybe a hostile environment there at MetLife. But I think that at the end of the day, uh, you know, again, it comes down to a rookie quarterback, Sam Darnold. Uh, he's going to have all this tape to watch now from Josh Rosen's game and see all these exotic looks and, and blitzes and different schemes and fronts. But but at the end of the day, I think Zim's got another page or another book of completely new different designs and, 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 and play calls on third down specifically. Sam Darnold is a guy that if you fluster him or put him in kind of hostile environments and situations, uh, he will make mistakes. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, Sam's got, again, the, the kind of advantage of, again, just watching Josh Rosen and, and seeing what they like to do to rookie quarterbacks specifically. So I think the Vikings win. Uh, I don't think it's a blow up by any means um, as much as I'd like that but I think uh, 23 20 something like that I think field goal kickers come to play big time on this one supposed to save your prediction oh god come on scrub all right I'm out Trip. Thanks a lot. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I think it does come down to Sam Darnold. Uh, I think the Vikings will be able to uh, m- maintain Kroll, but um, uh, the scrub on uh, that offensive line, Spencer Long, interior pressure. Let's go Linville. Let's go double A gap. Look, let's do that up. Uh, Darnold uh, this year under pressure has a quarterback rating of 48.2. And much to Arif Chagrin. Damn it. I, I, I was hoping he was going to be here tonight because uh, he actually throws really well to the left. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, so does Trubisky now. So it's where all his positive the myth has been dispelled. I, 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 I just re- sincerely hope that that got to Nagy and Trubisky like they had a laugh over it, and oh, then they're like, God. "All right, it ha- I, there's a very good chance it did." Yeah, I mean, let's be honest. Like players, coaches, maybe not coaches, but players definitely read the press more than they try to lead on. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Nagy was like, "We're gonna make you throw all the time to the left, all the time again." I would again. love it. <laughs> I would love it. I mean, the Bears game. Just like Nagy's scripted plays should all be throws to the left. Trubisky just in, pointing in the press, press box every, <laughs> every time he completes one down the left sideline. I so forget good. what it was exactly, what they were reading or watching of a Reefs, but when we had Mike Bannon at the Senior Bowl, who mm-hmm. used to work for the Vikings organizations through the scout team, he told us that he remembers walking in and, and Rick Spielman and some other front staff guys were reading a Reef stuff. Mm-hmm. And that was even three, I mean, this is long before the athletic Adrian or anything like Peterson that. Adrian Peterson will be traded to <laughs> so the Buccaneers. So I can't remember what it was, but just to hear the fact that, you know, Spielman was digging into a reef stuff, I mean, that was that was killing me. Crazy. Well, my favorite. So you know I mean, yeah, when Chad when Chad Greenway came out, oh, to, no, that was yeah. still yes. the greatest moment of all right. time. <laughs> Went on fist bump to reef at training camp. Oh, that was that the was best. That was great. I, I like that Arif is still here when he's not here. This is like a this is like an Irish wake. <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you a story. Uh, First drink this. Right, let, let me tell you about hour two. We're gonna open up the phone lines. We got a bunch of tour questions as well. It's gonna be good times. Uh, so check that out. iTunes, Stitcher, I Radio, Spotify, Google Play, ZoneCoverage.com slash machine. But for Luke, not Arif, for Yinka and Eric and Tommy on the glass, I'm Andy Sanano. Sorry, bye. Let's hour two.